Hey everyone, welcome to another lesson. Now in the last lesson, we created a grid system to lay our elements out on. In this lesson, we are gonna make a responsive grid of elements. In fact, in this lesson, we're gonna be building this widget. Just like always, we're gonna need consistent gutters in between the elements, but this time we need a fluid grid with column tracks at least 24 rems wide, but they can grow wider if there is available space. So once again, we're in another code sandbox IO project, and there's a link to it in the notes below if you want to click and follow along. And let's start off by like just getting a basic grid working here. The so we need to import React from React. Let's go ahead and import. There's this card component that I we've built here. You can look at it and see if you want, um, but it is a default. So we're going to call this just card from card. And then Let's copy and paste the rest of this code. Give that a little refresh. And here we are. This is a good starting point. So basically we have a bunch of these cards that have their names, emails, so on and so forth. And we, what we're looking to do is just get these cards to be a minimum value and use as many columns as it can. So we're going to create something called a grid. Uh, so we're going to import styled components, uh, styled from styled components. I like to kind of separate that. And I know we're going to need our spacing map from spacing map and let's create a grid style dot div And let's start adding the property. So first of all, we're, we're going to want to do display grid. And we're going to want to do, in fact, let's just copy and paste this. And now we're going to get our gutters in there that we want. And this last part, in, in the columns component, when we did our grid template columns, we did a repeat function and we said something like six, uh, like six, one FR units. Well, we, there is another available option here. Instead of just repeating six times, we could say auto fit and this says, okay, browser, I'm going to let you decide how many columns there are. Instead of me telling you, I'll let you figure that out. I'll let you figure out the best way to make that work. Now, since we only gave it a single value, it's only going to create, it's going to auto fit everything to be one FR and just do one column, but we can take advantage of something else. And in this case, it's a function called min max. And it basically gives two dif different thresholds. It gives you, you give the minimum threshold. So the minimum width that it needs to be. So in this case, we're going to say 24 rem. And then we're going to give an upper threshold of one FR. So basically this will, it will auto fit everything yeah. as long as it's at least 24 rems, but no more than one FR, which is just a column. 
a one fraction of the available space. And the browser is going to come in here and try to fit as many columns as, as it can while maintaining this minimum value. Now you can use anything as your, your constraints. You just need to have the first value be your, your lower threshold and the second value be your upper threshold. And it typically works best if one of these is some type of variable amount. So that way it can grow or shrink to any amount depending on on the uh, what's going on. So you could do something like 45% or something like that. And you can see it's capping out everything at 45%, but it is making it grow up to that point. But it works really great with this these fractional units because then they can divide up the available space really easily. So as you can see here, like, this is working pretty much how we want. As we get wider, it will put more columns. And as we get narrower, it'll take up less columns until it finally stacks everything on one on top of the other. So really all we need to do now is let's make this value right here variable. Let's add a function here and just to make it a little easier we're going to take the use the magic of copy and paste and now what this is doing is we're saying hey give me the minimum item width and whatever gets passed in we're going to use that as the lower threshold but if no value is given we're going to use 320 pixels that's kind of a standard mobile phone size. So that way it gets to the, it will always be at least 320 pixels wide. So still working exactly how we want. But let's go ahead and let's give our, let's add a little bit bigger gutter. So we can go gutter equals Excel and let's let's go ahead and use that 24 rem and set it explicitly here and there we go that's that's exactly what the uh, design wanted there is one problem. It works great. It starts stacking when we get to this point. But when we get less than 24 rem, you see it starts going off the page there. And that's not desirable. That's overflow like that. That's not something you ever really want. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually take this value right here and we're going to wrap it in a min function. And if you remember, in the last mm -hmm. lesson, we already learned about the min function. Mm -hmm. It will return the value that happens to be smaller between these two values. So we're going to say, I want the minimum width of 24 rem, in this case, because that's what we're passing in, or 100%, which means 100% of the width of this outer layer here and that will guarantee that if 100% if the entire width of this outer container of this grid is less than 24 rems we're going to start using this value instead of the value passed in and now if we you can see as we scroll down here we just keep getting smaller and smaller and smaller and it never overflows. In fact, yeah, we can get really, really small and still have usable cards that don't overflow off the, the screen. So, and that's it. That was probably the easiest of all of those. It, it, this is fantastic. This is responsive by default. You don't have to do anything. 
you don't set any viewports, uh, media queries, it just automatically goes to the most optimal grid that it possibly can um, based off the minimum width of these cards. So, um, next we, we've learned how to do a lot of this, these grids and move a lot of things in kind of like these two dimensional spaces, but sometimes we need to just work with things that are in line. And in that case, we're going to introduce a new primitive in this next lesson called the inline cluster. And once again, it's going to be responsive by default. It's going to do some really cool things. And I'm excited to show it to you. We'll see you on the next lesson.